Hello everyone, so today's a bit of a different video. Today I'm giving you a tutorial. I'm showing you my Magic of Voxel to Unity workflow. And in the middle of that, there'll be Blender because Blender's needed in my case. So the reason I'm doing this video is because I think, I think uh, Magic of Voxel is great software, but you need to do a few things to get it to be really good. And we're gonna get into that today. So obviously the first thing you need to do is open up Magic of Voxel. And if you don't have it, there'll be a link down below. So here we have Magic of Voxel. And the first thing you want to do is, well, first of all, decide what size of blocks you want in the world. For my tower defense game, I tend to went for 100 by 100 blocks, but you can do this with any size and it'll work. So make sure you change up here. Uh, the max, maximum size is 126 by 126. So do what you need. You can always scale up in Unity. So we'll go for 100. And there we go. So now this is the norm. This is the editing view. So what I tend to do is you just attach what you need. So we'll do that. So we have a block here, and it's just 100 by 100 is nothing special. Now the palette is something interesting. So the palette's all different colours, and let's say we want custom... Well, you can use any of these colours and you can change them, fair enough. I tend to go for number three, because that way you just have a blank canvas to work on. So let's make a colour here. We'll go for... We'll have a red, and we'll paint that all over. So there we go. We've got a colour in the palette. Now, one thing with Magic of Voxel is, and I will do another video going into all different tips about it, but one thing with it is, when you export, if you have multiple objects in a scene, in Voxel you'll get multiple palettes coming out, and you only actually need one. So I'll show you how that works as well. So let's make, we'll make two blocks, and we'll use both of them. Now, so we have this one, so if you click tab in Magic of Voxel, you go into this view, which is the best view, <laughs> because you can do a lot with it. So we'll ground all the objects, so if you go into move, and click ground, you sort it there. And it's really handy to do that. Now, a few things you need to notice here. So this object is just called object. Give it a name. If you don't give it a name here, you can rename it in Blender, which is fine. But just give it a name here. So we'll call it red block. So here we have the red block. And you can edit the layer name if you want. So you don't have to do that, but we'll just call it the red block. And we're sorted. So before you add the next object in, you want to click on the layer you want to add it to. So that's number one for us. And then click the plus. And it's added it to the correct layer. Now be really careful when doing this because you can easily swap around the layers. Make sure you don't like accidentally move these arrows. You don't want to do that because that sets. So whatever object we're doing here, if you click that arrow, it will move it to that layer. Don't do that. So as you see here, we have two objects. If I click on this one, it's got the red border there. And that one has the orange border. That's showing you the different layers are on. So now we want this to, let's make this like a blue block. But first let's make it, let's make sure we ground it. So we'll call this one the blue block. Click tab and we're back into paint mode. So let's get another color. We'll make it a nice blue and we will just attach. And there we go. So now we have a red block and a blue block. And that's fine. That's all we need now. So then you need to export it. So if I move my camera, as you see here in the bottom right, there's export. So you want to export as an OBJ and choose a place to save it. You'll get two OBJ files called, well, as many OBJ files as you have called the names of these things and you'll have a lot of palettes. You only need one palette, so delete the rest, keep one. So OBJ, and you'll have the Fire Explorer pop up. Just pick somewhere to save it. I'm gonna just save it somewhere on my desktop, but you can't see that. But just, just do it. So then when you've done that, we go into Blender. So here we are in Blender. This isn't an empty scene just because I'm using it just so I can reference it myself. So what you want to do is you want to import your objects, and you want to import them from wherever you save them from. So and unfortunately, you do have to do it one at a time unless you download some add-ons for Blender, which lets you do one more than one object. If anyone wants that add-on. Just let me know in the comments and I'll make sure, I'll give you a link to it. If you have like lots of objects, it can be a pain to have to select them all. But I've only got two, so I'll just do it one at a time. So here we are in Blender. So we've got all these objects here. And they're all okay. As you can see, if you click N, you'll have this menu pop up. And as you can see, it has like 19 minus zero on the uh, rotation. We will fix that. So one thing that's going to annoy you when you try and put these into Unity is the origins for these objects are completely messed up. See, it's origin around that. So there's a few things you need to do. So first of all, you want to make sure you reset the origin. So let's say we'll do that on the blue block first because it's not in line with anything. So we'll set origin and usually you set origin to geometry, but I don't think that's the best one. I think setting the origin to the center of mass is probably the best one in my opinion, just because it, goes, it should go in the center. And if you've got 100 by 100, it'll go right in the center. And then you got that there. So you're now thinking, well, what about this one? Do the exact same. Origin to center of mass. There you go. So now a few things you need to sort out. If you notice here, the location is completely messed up. So, zero, zero. There we go. 
<laughs> it's in line with the 3D cursor. You can set origin to 3D cursor. And as you see here, that didn't change, which is what we want. We really, you really need to make sure it's zero, zero in the location because that way it'll work better. And when you rotate it, it rotates nicely. So now this one. So I found a lovely tool in um, Blender. So the first of all, what you want to do is trans, you want to do control S and we want to do selection to cursor. Now we're thinking that looks all right, but in reality, it might not be. So the best thing you can do, select both your objects, go objects, set up. So you want to transform and then align the objects and do it by the X, Y, and Z. And as you can see here, now we've got some good Z fighting going on. So these two objects are perfectly in line with each other now. So now what you want to do then is, first of all, you'll notice a few things. So if you renamed it a magic voxel, good job. You did great. Uh, it'll be blue block and blue block. If you didn't, you have to rename it. But when you rename it, make sure you rename both of those. Otherwise, Unity will be like, well, this is just a random cube you've given me. The next thing, they have two materials called palette. Rename them, otherwise all your Unity materials will be called palette. I'm gonna rename that blue underscore matte. I'll rename this one red underscore matte. And you'll be fine. You don't want hundreds of palette materials and you'll see it gets very old very quick. Now we have our two objects here. The final thing, you wanna click on your object, control A, and you wanna apply all transforms. So as you can see, it's rotation is zero, zero, zero. You want to do that for the blue block as well. All transforms. And you're done with Bl now you're done with Blender. So now what you want to do next is you need to export it. However, there's a thing with Blender and Unity, I don't know, understand it. If you export it just as without changing any settings, the object will be fine, but it'll be scaled into 100 by 100 by 100. You really don't want that. So what you want to do is you go and file export. So you want to ex I export them as FBX just because I prefer to do that. So export FBX. So here we have the Blender file view. So what you wanna do is, you wanna make sure you select, first of all, do select the objects, that's really important, because that means it's only gonna export the object you've selected in case you don't wanna export all the lights. Then, because here you should have apply transform. If you might say experiment, just click it, click it. I mean, I made this as a preset, so Vox to Unity, and it's experimental, apply transform, and select the objects. Do that and trust me. Now rename it whatever you want, so I'm gonna call it red block for this one. I think I'm exporting the red block. I'm, expand, I'm exporting the blue block. So we'll call it blue block. And then you want to export FBX. And that should be exported. Now you can do the same for the other block. So I'll do that as well, just dead quick. And then once that's done, we're ready to go back into Unity and we're ready to play around with the objects we just made. So I open up a Unity project. I'll just open up a random one. So we're in Unity now. I've opened up a random one of my projects. It's just a standard 3D project. So what you want to do is you want to import the FBXs from Blender. But you also need to import one palette from Magic of Voxel, and you'll be sorted. One palette per file on Voxel, if you get me. So here we have the two objects. Here we go, but that one doesn't have a material on it. Don't worry about it, we'll sort it. So first of all, what you want to do for both of them is, I tend to extract the materials just so I have a bit more control over them. So you want to click on Extract Materials, it'll ask you what folder, just do it in the exact same one you're working in. Or a Materials folder. Whatever, doesn't matter. Do the same for both, and you're still wondering, well, that one's just white. So now, in the base map, what you want to do is just drag in the palette. And it won't, it won't apply straight away, but if you drag that onto the scene, it's red. And it's fine. So here we have it in the scene. I may be thinking, that's massive. Yeah, it, it is. 100 by 100 is pretty big. I'm not exactly sure the scale, but it's massive. Again, you can just scale it down. No issues with that. So I'm going to reset the transform of that. But that was, this was mainly just to prove that the material, you only need one palette because it knows what to take from. And we can drag the other one in as well. And that's on zero and zero. Well, where is it? It's on it. It's aligned perfectly. <laughs> this was a massive pain for my tile defense, so I'm really happy this worked. And if you want to prove it worked even better, you just drag it out. Minus 10. And as you look, it is exactly on line. There are no seams. There are no little gaps, it works perfectly. The materials are fine, it's one by one by one. The rotation is fine, which I'm really happy about. And if you try to rotate it, it works perfectly. So one issue you might have got, if you don't sort the rotation and the origins out, is if you rotate it by 90 degrees on the Y, um, sometimes it messes up the transform, but <laughs> it's perfect. Put that back on zero, and as you can see, Z fighting. And if you go, well, that doesn't look good. It's not great, because obviously they're on the exact, it's on the exact same like level which is good because it means they're exactly aligned. And that's basically it. 
Magic of Voxel is a fantastic piece of software and I would highly recommend it. It takes some time to get used to and I do have a lot more tips I'd love to give you but this video has already on, gone on quite a bit and I just wanted to touch on getting Magic of Voxel to Unity because this is my workflow. This is what I have to do to make the tower defense. If you would like to see another Magic of Voxel tips video, please let me know and make sure you like and subscribe. We are, at the time of recording this, we are so close to 100 subscribers and it's really exciting. But yeah, if you really want some more tips, just let me down down below. I've got a lot more tips I think I could share. Being a beginner with Magic of Voxel and knowing what I know at the moment, I think I could help some people. So please let me know if you want to see that. And yeah, thank you everyone for watching. Make sure to share, like, and subscribe. And I will see you next time. Bye everyone.